Today we read from Isaiah 40, verses 6 through 11. <clears throat> A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers. The flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with his might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. This is the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> I cannot deny it is incredibly hard to write a sermon on peace. When all you see in the news is destruction and war. I read the words of Isaiah, and that first verse, verse 6, Cry, what shall I cry, but tears of deep sorrow. The Lord comes with his might and his arm rules for him. That's what we think of when we think of the opposite of peace, right? In fact, I have an awesome clip for you from Chronicles of Narnia, just, just to keep you, keep you going. Oh, oh wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, back, 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 volume, volume, volume's important on this one. Are we good? Okay. Chronicles of 
Narnia, there's an interesting chapter. And Edmund, you have to know a little bit about this story. For those of you who have not read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, read it. Add it to Kara's list of things that you need to catch up on so you can understand her sermons. In the Chronicles of Narnia, we have the three children who come from our human world and enter through a wardrobe into this fantastical world. And it's in that fantastic world that they come to know Aslan, whom who, who you hear the oldest child, Peter, going for Aslan and for Narnia. They come to know him and they come to understand him. However, before they really come to know him, there's a scene and an excerpt, and it's where the third child, Edmund, who ends up being the traitor, where he and his brother, they've just entered into the wardrobe, and they come across this red robin, and they start to follow him. And Edmund pulls Peter aside and says, Peter, how do we know which side is right? The downside of war is that often both sides believe they are right. And what you end up with is carnage. Carnage not just on the battlefield, but in the people who are sending those off to battle who are just caught in the crossfire. train of 
of thought, they're going towards the headquarters of her brain, and they, Joy, who is that wonderful little character there, spins around and in her exuberance knocks over the boxes of fact and the boxes of opinion. And then she, she says, they look so similar. His response is it happens all the time. That scene gets a little bit lost in the rest of the movie. But man, oh man, doesn't it strike a truth home? I know one of the things I learned, I don't remember when, I must have been second or third grade, whenever they make you do your first research paper. And they send you to the library. And you have to research. <coughs> How many of you remember that first like research paper? You are fortunate if you do not. I think I had to write something about like Clara Barton, familiar with her, nurse, forward, uh, blah, 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 not even Civil War, thank you. And I remember I'm going in and I had to find a book. And I got some book that was blue. I don't remember who does it or publishes it. Probably some penguin novel. No offense to them. But, so I pull it out thinking, oh, this is fact, right? Well, it has facts in it. But a lot of it became the story of, of how it came to be and, and the author's supposition of what must have happened. Perhaps that's what we do, right? We take our facts and our opinions and somehow they get intertwined and intermingled and after a while, we know the truth. We are people of God and yet to attain the peace of God, we have to let go and let God. That's the reason the opposite of peace is, is ego. Ourselves, our understanding, the power we so desperately hold on to, the control. I mean, hello, who likes giving up control? I mean, how many of us are really willing to let our spouse drive our car? Some of you are like, no, mm -mm, not happening, my car, thank you. Some of you are like, well, shoot, they drive because I'm always in the passenger seat and they drive me around. Thank you. But man, oh man, I don't know. First time Chad and I were dating, the first time he let me drive his like precious car, you could see the anxiety on his face, like, oh my goodness, I'm letting her have my car. It's hard to give up control. It is so hard to give up control. We try to find it again in countless ways in our lives. We make lists thinking we're going to follow them or check them off. We make plans, hoping that it'll all go that way. We can prepare all we want, and inevitably something awry happens, or something unexpected happens. We have to give up the control of our lives in order to attain peace. We have to give up the control in our lives. Or we will not truly be able to attain the peace 
of God in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, and in the life around us. I mean, think about it. Have you, have you seen, like, really peaceful people? You know, like, nothing phases them. I'm not talking, like, nonchalant, like, laid back. Because laid back people, things still phase them. It just might not be what is making you run all amok. But I mean, truly filled to the brim with God's peace, people. They're not easy to find. Let's be truthful and honest. I am not one of them. I am a stressful, crazy blah, 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 person. But some people have reached that point of peaceful saturation. Let's call it that. Where they have just reached a point of acceptance. And maybe that's the other part of it. In order to have peace, you must accept. Now, acceptance does not mean rolling over like a doormat and allowing whatever to have happen. Happen. Acceptance means this is what is, and I will go from here. That's how we have peace. We are on our way to Advent. We're on our way through it. It's the second week. Last week we were challenged to be the hope. This week I challenge you to let go. Take a deep breath. Let's do it all together. Come on. And let go. <clears throat> it was mentioned earlier that, you know, this only happens once a year. Well, yeah. It happens once a year every year, people. And yet somehow we get so stressed. Our to-do list gets longer. Our gift list gets longer. Our everything gets longer. And we go, oh, man, oh, man. And we don't actually let go until we realize, I can't finish it all by December 24th, so I'm done. Let go. Because Christmas is going to come whether you have 20 dozen or 2 dozen cookies baked. under the tree or none. Let go and let the peace of Christ embrace and fill and overwhelm your soul. 